In this demo, uh, good friend Joe Se Siegel, aka Mother, many of you guys uh, know him from Armorama and, and other uh, nooks and crannies on the web, is going to show us a, a, a fairly simple uh, airbrushing demo on how to do a NATO uh, three tone. Um, what, do, what, do you, what do you plan to do with this one? Uh, today, we're going to need to do the NATO color on the M32 or M35A2 uh, deuce and half truck. By AFE, 135th scale. My color choice for the three NATOs will be to my is XF70 NATO black, XF69 NATO brown, XF68 NATO green. Alright, we're just finishing up our base coat of NATO green. that I'm going to be using are the Tamiya and as you uh, the base coat which I already have done is in the Tamiya's uh, NATO green and then followed by NATO black and NATO brown. Before I get started I would like to do my reference checking and when I do do that I go on the internet and I look around reference pictures. For this particular model I typed in M35 A2 and I looked at all the different vehicles and how they're painted out. Uh, they pretty much follow a standard pattern. And uh, I also like to see how they fade out and weather over time. To get my NATO colors, most of the times your instructions will carry on the back side uh, the NATO colors and uh, the patterns of themselves. They're not really that accurate. So I'll go on Google and I'll type in N35 A2 NATO three-tone camouflage pattern and up pops a bunch of references and I come and I find these here which are put out on uh, tech manuals and as you notice you got the profile of, this, uh, of the vehicle, and you got a bunch of numbers, and you can see the pattern all put in place. I already put the numbers uh, at the top, one, two, and three, corresponding to colors, and where they go. Um, you know, you want to get a top view. As well as the front and back, and your other profile as well. Now to get my pattern laid out, I always use a mechanical pencil. I use it for everything and it's great for marking on paint. As I mentioned, I already had painted my vehicle in, in the, its base coat of the NATO green. Now I'm, I'm going to start laying out my pattern. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of times a lot of people will start laying out the whole pattern. What's going to happen is you're going to get confused. I like to just, I already got my base. Now I'm gonna do my black. Black, you have more than you do the brown, so I'm just gonna do my lines in the black. And starting out right here. You're not far from the front fender to here. So I'll start drawing in my line. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can find that in. Then you know what comes up over here. Then pick it back up. there on the zoom. There we go. I'll dub over some really cool music while you're doing this. Some anthrax or white zombie or something. Right. Just uh, do a little bit. 
Okay, as you see, that's how I laid out my black. It's just over the top. Now you want to pick up your sides, find your profile. And as you see where the black, pick it back up. In case you haven't noticed, this is when we get sterile, you know, just because, you know, OSHA, let's not mention OSHA, we'll just, you know, we'll just see what's going on over here, but uh, all kinds of trip hazards and stuff, but we're, we're professionals, you know, I would say don't try us at home, but that would totally defeat the purpose of the demo, wouldn't it? Got our native black, I already mixed it, stirred it up, gave it a good shake. Everybody has their own thinning. I like mine where it's, the, the rule of thumb is, you want your paint to run and flow like milk. That's a good thing. If it's not coming out of the gun, you need it thinner. If it's like, if it's coming out too fast, you thin it too much. Yep. Don't put the don't fill your uh, bowl up real high because you're gonna have to start turning this around. And what's gonna happen is you got that filled up high, you're gonna be dripping paint all over your pants, floor, uh -huh. and everything else. Dog. Yep. Uh, start it in the center of your mark, your two pencil markings. And you're going right over those pencil marks. Yep, I'll follow the pencil marks and then I'll fill it. There's a nice example of a difference between a soft and hard edge. Yep. Uh, again, start in the center. up to this paint line as I was straight in here I kind of move my hand to get in here so I don't get that blow down this way creating that that so, generally speaking that's bad yes so again I, I'm here I turn stay in that line this can always be revisited this is our first. Yeah, we could do it well next time. <laughs> <laughs> From here, Joe does a second color, the NATO brown, using the same technique, using a pencil to mark off, using the template as a guide, and then filling in with the airbrush. Um, I can't show you this because I lost the video footage um, like a fool. Sorry. There are some times you need to tighten up. And what I like to do is, like I said, with your base color on, your black, your brown, then you can always go back later with the needle green and tighten your pa uh, pattern up once you have it all done. Here we are. We have our three tone NATO deuce and a half finished. We have our NATO brown, black, and green. And again, all that was achieved by following off the uh, reference material that I uh, got off the internet. Go. All right, now that my colors are all on, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. While this is drying, I'll go 
grab my next colors that I'm going to need. This is um, vehicles. Uh, it, it, in time, they fade out, they bleach out, uh, they lose uh, color in their paints. And uh, to do that, again, I'm going to lighten up the, the, the main colors that I used here, and then just go inside the centers with lighter colors of the base colors that I used. And here we are back at the uh, Section 8 paint rack using Tamiya's colors. Uh, to do my bleach out, I like to uh, light my colors up um, other than white. White is not a great color. Uh, it just flattens like the, the greens right out and turns the uh, um, blacks into a, a real chalky gray. So my choice is XF57 buff and I will use these. Uh, this here color mixed with the uh, NATO green and the NATO brown. And then for the NATO black to bleach out, I use the German gray XF63. Here I am back at the model. It's all uh, fully dried up and uh, I'm going to uh, start bleaching out my paint. Again, the Tamiya NATO green. Just a couple of drops because you're not going to use a lot of paint in here. And then the uh, XF57 buff is going to go just a, a tinge. You just want to change it up very little. And here, I don't pour paint in like that. I take a, a Q-tip, I load my Q-tip up, and I mix it in with my paint. And a little bit of alcohol. Down and stir it in. And as you can see, it's changed the color a little bit. It's still green. The white would have just brightened it up and flattened the, the green right out. Alright, the color I'm trying to uh, achieve here by mixing is just a, sh a shade a little lighter than this color. If you're unsure, you can take your Q-tip wipe some of the paint off. You can do a test if you wish. Find a spot that you can cover back up later in time and then just touch it and you can see it's lighter than the base color. What well, it's it's wet so it's going to be a little shinier so don't worry it'll, it'll flatten right out. Let's start bleaching. Again when I do this you, you only want to stay towards the center. You don't want to cover the whole green. You just want to be towards the center and work away. Oh. Now the sides really won't get too much. Mostly the top. But I like how it looks. I still go for it. But Now I'm not going to do the bed. The bed is metal, a lot of equipment going in and out of there. So I'm going to do some weathering and scraping, exposing some, uh, some of the metal underneath. So it really won't get too much bleached up, but the wood would. You're not looking to cover over the green. Again, you just want to get in and inside it. And, you know, and you'll notice now it's starting to really pop up, take shape. All right, now that I get uh, the green, I'm going to work on the native brown. Again, I'm going to lighten it up a touch with the uh, buff. Again, I'll just dab some paint and just mix it into the paint to get to lighten it up. 
Now, you don't want to lighten the brown up too much. Again, you just want it a little bit of a shade higher than the uh, you know, base color. And again, if you need, again, test pattern it. It's always easier to add the lightener to the base than constantly adding base to the lightener. All right, that looks good. Okay, under light pressure, we're just gonna hit in the center and work our way out, but not all the way to the outer edges of the brown. I like that so far. All right, last color is the uh, German gray, and that's gonna go inside my natal black. A little bit of paint. Okay, Start it up. And again, same, same uh, procedure, stay towards the center, work your way out, low pressure, little paint. And again, it's just mostly over the tops. All right, we're finished. And uh, I'm very pleased the way it turned out. Uh, it has a little bit of blotchiness, and that's exactly what I was going for. Uh, my references show me that. Now that it's finished, our next segment, we will be weathering out our uh, vehicle, and I will be using the, uh, the, uh, the newest uh, AK products, uh, both wet and dry. And uh, we're going to do a light mud uh, inside the fenders, around and underneath. And I'm going to show you how to create some rust for the leaf springs. And we're going to do some fuel stains and some oil staining all up on air. And to finish it off, we will scratch out the bed, rust, and expose some of the metal. We hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. We'll be doing many more in the future. We're looking to do maybe uh, one every week and one every two weeks. Um, if you have uh, any uh, comments or questions or any requests for future demos, uh, leave them in the comment section below or contact us on Facebook. Thanks and uh, happy modeling. And again, it's just mostly over the tops. Oh. All right. <laughs>